Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turbocharge your learning as a self-taught developer, especially when you feel like you're missing some of the computer science principles or math that you may need for programming. A lot of us don't come from traditional CS degrees, which I feel are important because they do build that foundation that we eventually will need as developers as we continue to working towards more senior roles. The most important part, I think this concept of junior developers is kind of probably ending. With the aid and the tools that we have with AI, I think this is going to make it much harder for junior developers to compete with some of the tools. So our goal is not to identify as a junior developer, but to develop the skills that we rival mid to senior level developers that comes from building more complex projects, but it also comes to learning the basics and understanding concepts and programming that maybe you have missed on your learning journey or just never had the opportunity to learn. So today I want to share with you what I'm doing to help me learn as quickly as possible. But first, let me show you this game I'm making. And the point is not that I made a game, is that it covered some of the topics maybe that you might not be familiar with, like how to use two-dimensional arrays to present a grid or how to use a graph to be able to do pathfinding, which is something that you will see here. So let me restart the game. And here you could see that I'm the blue dot. And I have the circles randomly moving about patrolling. When I get close to a dot and north side turns red, that means it is aware of me and is going to continue to pursue me until I completely escape and it loses my scent or if I again come close to it. And again, this is using pathfinding to determine my location relative to the enemy and then be able to use pathfinding to be able to follow me as they come along and of course i could drop bombs and blow them up because like you know what i'm sick and tired of these enemies but the point is not to make the game and i'll make another video why i think making games like this is a cool little resource to learning some of the advanced topics so when I was starting out, I had no idea how to make this exactly from scratch. For instance, what is the priority queue? How does it work? And this algorithm of moving towards player, which is responsible of being able to find the player. This is not something that I was aware. And then I was like, let me code it out myself. So I actually relied on Cursor to help me build this project. And it was painstaking because, you know, AI is not perfect. You still need to know some basic programming to be able to ask questions when it's stuck to guide in the right direction. But I was finally able to create this example. And notice here you see our finding path algorithm that kind of shows you how do we find path when we're traversing through the graph. And so if you're watching this and you're like, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is perfectly fine. And this is why I made this video. So after I created this perfect example, I want to walk you through the flow that I did. I went ahead and I literally copied this code that I wrote. So before we move to step two, step one is try to build something with the aid of Cursor AI or ChatGPT that covers a new topic that you have never explored. The idea is not to understand it completely, but to build a working prototype like I just demonstrated, which will bring us to step two. And this is the next step that I do. Once I have that piece of code that's working, that I kind of understand some things, other things I have no idea, I go to ChatGPT and I literally use this prompt, create a learning resource that will teach me all the computer science and math that I need to know to understand the following code. And I paste that code snippet of that completed code that I created that represented the game that I showed earlier. Once it spits out the answer, it will go ahead and spin out this basic outline to understand the code you provided you need a solid foundation and it will tell you literally the mathematical concept that you need to know like for what we've did in that example you need some basic algebra and and geometry understanding how we created that grid next it kind of talked about data structures again we worked with a grid using arrays or two-dimensional arrays then we worked on pathfinding which 
we need to understand graphs and pathfinding and it'll give you these links to resources but chat gpt is really bad at actually giving you real links and then based on other stuff that i did in my tutorial we covered object-oriented programming as well as other basic stuff but i'm more interested for this example to focus on the structures and algorithm so once i'm done with this step the third step is actually get some tangible resources that you could use to learning. So I copy this outline and I go to Perplexity AI and literally I paste in that outline that ChatGPT provided. And I'm literally asking Perplexity to give me the resources that I could find online that are perfect for learning the things that I need. And here, this is what it recommended. It recommended a course, Coursera course on algorithms from Princeton University. It also recommended me open course where from MIT, introduction to algorithms and what you could do. And this is what I did. For instance, it also recommended some other video lectures, for instance, from Computerfile that explore breath first search, death first search, and all the other algorithms. And I literally went and found those videos that I could go ahead and watch. And I could also look up that Princeton lecture. And here's that couple of lectures that cover algorithms and stuff. So the basic premise is that there's plenty of resources that we could use to get that missing knowledge. And the goal here is not just to watch the videos, but after you watch the videos, you better understand and learn those algorithms that make sense. Go back to your code editor. And of course you have this code as your reference, but go ahead and try to recreate exactly what you did with help of cursor AI, try to recreate it by yourself and do this back and forth where you try something, you ask some questions, you get some resources from AI, you study and you repeat that cycle. The reason why I wanted to share this with you is because this is something that I'm doing to help me to continue to learn as a self-taught developer. I've never went to a university, but I feel like moving forward into the future, AI is going to help us do the easy things and eventually some of the intermediate things. Right now, even making this example that I was showing you, I actually ran into a lot of issues with Cursor AI where it failed spectacularly and I spent way more time using Cursor than if I did just try to find examples uh, right away. But the reason why I like this idea working with cursor is because when it gets stuck, it doesn't have all the answers. You need to actually try to figure out and code if you could figure out yourself. So there's that part of active learning on your behalf that you have to engage in. So basically this is what I'm doing to help me focus on learning more intermediate concepts. So I could focus on letting AI do the easy stuff, but also practicing things that allow me to flex my critical skills and problem solving skills that are required as developers. And the last thing I'm gonna say before I go, I have a friend who's a senior engineer and he's been interviewing on a lot of roles recently. And he told me the type of questions that they ask. One of the examples, he had to basically create an app that basically takes uh, allocated funds, some amount of money, and it needs to automatically distributed to multiple folks that are owned that money. And there's many different edge cases and there's many different scenarios. What happens if the payment fails? What happens if there's not enough funds? There's all these little situations. So his job, it was not so much write the actual code, but actually think through the problem and identify all the edge cases and how would you actually do that? So writing the code is not the most important part. The most important part is actually thinking about the problem, coming up with the solution. And once you have a working solution, you represent that solution in code. So moving forward, I feel actual coding skills from the standpoint of understanding the different syntax, that's gonna be less important. And the most important thing is going to be your problem solving skills, your ability to solve complex problems and get to solutions and your ability to troubleshoot existing code that is already there. Because those are the things that I'm really finding myself doing even when using AI tools is that it'll create you some code, but it's not gonna be working. So you have to troubleshoot it. You have to look at the bugs, try to find bugs and really think that the problem to 
either fix it yourself in code or to be able to understand how to give better prompts to allow your AI to get the solution. And the final thing I'm going to say is AI replacing developers. I don't think so. And I don't think it's going to happen. But what it is doing, it's raising the bar to a higher level than it was before. So when you thought that entry level position was here, now we're here. And so if you're at entry level, but the bar has been raised here, you kind of have to do whatever is in your power to continue to learn and build things to get to a point that you get to the new bar that's been set because of all these AI tools. I hope you found this video helpful. I literally just wanted to make this because this is something that I've been doing almost every day, this type of uh, learning, and it's been helping me a lot. So I just wanted to share it with you. So with that being said, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, you don't have to, but if you want to, it really supports the channel, even hitting the like or dislike button that matter. Talking crap in the comment section always helps, negative, positive. If you <laughs> talk crap in the comments, it still helps, so fantastic. But with that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.